Hey guys, the Explorer of Horror here, the Horror Boy. Welcome back to some more reviews, and today we're going to be getting to my review on The Batman, which came out this past weekend, and um, if you're worried about spoilers, don't worry, this is a spoiler-free review. Hopefully down the road I can get to a spoiler discussion, maybe, or we'll be talking about spoilers in, in that video, <clears throat> but don't worry, there's going to be no spoilers in this review. So, um, yeah, this will be a spoiler-free video. And this is basically going to be my just raw thoughts on the Batman. This is a 2022 film. Gets a uh, 8.5 on IMDb, directed by Matt Reeves. Uh, Matt Reeves, pretty ironic because I'm reviewing the Planet of the Apes movies too right now. So, um, of course, everybody uh, knows about the Matt Reeves Planet of the Apes trilogy. Very, very awesome trilogy, even though I... Definitely need to check out uh, the other two. I've only really seen one movie out of the series, and that's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. But I must say, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes uh, really, really impressed me. It was a very, very uh, excellent film. I also did see Cloverfield. I like Cloverfield. I know a lot of people are huge fans of it. I like it. I think the special effects are really impressive in it, and I like the found footage aspect. Um, not a huge, huge, huge fan of it. I know it's got a massive following it's pretty good it's definitely one of the better found footage movies but still not a bad movie i seen let me in a long time ago and i'll be honest i i, I just i haven't seen it in years so i really need to rewatch that film but the batman just to get the plot out of the way real quick um you have it being a brand new story about the riddler and the Riddler is causing these murders to happen, and Batman is investigating these murders. And you have a lot of Batman working with GCPD and working with uh, Detective Gordon. I don't know if it's Detective Gordon or Commissioner Gordon in this movie. But he's working with Gordon to solve these murders and figure out... Uh, it says here, Lieutenant James Gordon. So he's working with... Uh, Gordon in this movie to try to figure out who's doing this, who is the Riddler, and basically he's dealing with a lot of, you know, trauma, and you get this movie dealing with a lot of Batman not being the billionaire Bruce Wayne that we've all come to love, and he's a lot more down to earth and more quiet, and, you know, definitely my hat's off to, um, Robert Pattinson for this performance in this movie. It's it's really, really good. And you have a little bit of Bruce Wayne done with stuff in this movie. You have a lot of Batman and you have fight scenes. You have action. You have a giant plot. And I want to get more into some of the other things. Um, I'll get more into the plot probably when I do the spoiler discussion because to get into the plot right now would be kind of hard to do because I'd have to dance around a bunch of spoilers. But I want to say... Uh, first of all, that this movie is a phenomenal film. It is a fantastic film, and I know it's going to be on HBO Max in like a month or two, but when it comes out on 4K Blu-ray, I'm definitely picking up a physical copy of this movie. And I know a lot of people out there are going to be asking, is this the... Is it a good Batman movie compared to the others? Is it better than other Batman movies? And in my opinion, I know some people are going to be completely shocked by this. Uh, this is my favorite Batman live action movie so far. Yes, I said it. This is my preferred version to what I've been looking for this whole time. And not to say the other ones are bad movies. Um, the Tim Burton movies I love. The Schumacher movies I love. The um, Christopher Nolan movies I love. Batman versus Superman, I'm not, I wasn't really into the Snyderverse, the, the Snyder films, I just wasn't, it's not my cup of tea, it's cool if you are, but that definitely was probably my least favorite version of Batman, and like, not even anything that's been after, like, just the whole way that universe was, I just wasn't into it, but, yeah, I love the Tim Burton universe, Batman is a classic, Batman Returns I love, Batman Forever is great, I love what Schumacher did and made it a bright and colorful and just energetic film, I love, love, love Batman Forever, definitely one of my favorites, I love Batman and Robin, 
yes, I love Batman and Robin. It's a great throwback to the Adam West film or well, film and TV show. Uh, I think it's a great, different film. I think it's a well-made movie. Is it silly? Yes. Is it goofy? Yes. Is it over the top? Yes. But overall, it's very entertaining and very fun. I love Batman and Robin. Um, for years, I was like, oh, yeah, it's bad. Just to kind of, you know, fit in with the crowd. But I love Batman and Robin. It's a great movie to me. But uh, Batman Begins. I'd actually recently rewatched the Nolan trilogy to kind of get ready and get back into the mood of Batman and Batman Begins is my favorite out of that trilogy. I love the prequel aspect. I love the usage of the year one story. I love the, the bat suit. Uh, I thought Christian Bale gave a great performance in that movie, both as Bruce Wayne and Batman. The, the way that movie looked, the environment, the Gotham they chose and how it was designed. I love the first movie in that trilogy. Batman Begins is my favorite out of that trilogy. The Dark Knight... I'm not taking anything away from that movie. It is a phenomenal movie. It's an amazing film. It's a great piece of cinema, but I don't put it as high as other people do. Whereas, oh, this is the bar, and if you don't reach this, then there's, you're, you're just going to drop off. It's not going to be that good. I don't do that. To me, The Dark Knight, I love it. It's a great movie. It's one of my favorite Batman movies, but I don't hold it on that high standard that everybody else does where it's... I think on IMDb, it's like one of the top 10 highest rated movies on IMDb, which is crazy to me because I love Dark Knight, but there's also movies that I definitely can count more than 10 of that I like more than Dark Knight. And plus, it's not really my preferred, like, to get into the this film, it's not... This is my preferred tone. This is my preferred Batman. This is my preferred way to take the story. And this is my preferred route. Which is why when I seen Joker, I was impressed. Because I'm like, okay, here's a Batman-esque movie to end the universe of Batman. That's dark. That's gritty. That's R-rated. It's done with real problems. And it's dealing with a really heavy plot. I love Joker. I've never reviewed it on the channel. Hopefully one day I can, but I love Joker from 2019. Um, and I loved it so much because it was so different from Marvel. And, you know, Marvel is doing their own thing. The MCU I don't hate. I love a lot of movies from the MCU. Here lately, the movies haven't been the greatest. I wasn't a big fan of The Eternals. Black Widow was, at best, a blockbuster action movie. Um... I was really impressed by Shang-Chi, though. I really enjoyed that. But, you know, a, a lot of recent Marvel MCU stuff I haven't really been a big fan of. Um, the TV shows have been pretty good, like Loki, Hawkeye. I enjoyed those shows. I enjoyed WandaVision. Falcon the Winter Soldier is kind of eh. But the reason why I love this movie so much and why I love Joker, kind of the similar reasons, because they they tried to be different from the rest of the DCU. Whereas, I love Shazam, but a lot of those other movies, like Man of Steel, I remember not really been a big fan of. Batman vs. Superman, i not a fan of at all. Justice League, both cuts, I'm just not into the Snyderverse. I'm just not, I'm not into... I'm just not into it. No, I didn't even see Wonder Woman. I, I seen Aquaman. I enjoyed Aquaman for what it was. It wasn't a bad movie. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other ones. Because there's no Green Lantern movie. There's a Flash movie coming up. I'm not really too much into the DCU. It's just, to me, it was started out really rough. And I'm more into this. The, the Batman universe in the DCU. You know, Matt Reeves universe. Which I know they're going to be making TV shows of this from this Batman uh, universe and doing all kinds of side stuff, which is awesome because I'm really hyped for a sequel to this movie. And I love Tim Burton stuff. I love the Nolan trilogy, but to me, this, like I said, is the Batman that I've been waiting for for a while. You know, if I'm gonna say this, if one of your problems of the past movies was there wasn't a lot of Batman being Batman, whereas like I love the Nolan movies, but there are times where Batman disappears in those movies. And you don't get a lot of Batman in those films. And even a lot of movies before that, you didn't see a lot of Batman. This movie fixes that. There's a ton of Batman in this movie. And I gotta give major props to 
Robert Pattinson, not only for a phenomenal performance in this movie, not only for blowing away all of the hate he got because he was cast in this movie, which I thought was ridiculous how so many people were like, oh my God, Robert Pattinson, da 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 I'm like, you don't think the other actors that have played Batman haven't done romantic movies about, you know, or dramas or, you know... I get it. I'm not a huge fan of Twilight either, but I, it, that doesn't mean I was instantly like, oh, God, this guy's playing Bruce Wayne. Oh, my God, what the heck? Like, no, like, I didn't understand that, especially because I'd watched The Lighthouse, and The Lighthouse really showed Robert Pattinson's acting uh, ability in that movie, and he wasn't even really bad in Twilight. It was just Twilight was one of those things where you either loved it or you hated it. Um I won't lie, back when I seen Twilight, I hated it. Don't hate those movies. They're just definitely not my cup of tea. They're definitely not for me. Uh, I'm they're just I'm didn't really get into the movies. But Pattinson in this movie to me played the perfect Batman. To where as and, and as a character of as Bruce Wayne and Batman, I think he gets the dynamic right to me. To me personally. Now it's all gonna be up to, you know, your preference because you know, some people want a stealthy, fast, in the shadows, 24-7 Batman who's never seen. Um, some people want the whole, oh, Bruce Wayne has to be the billionaire playboy. He has to be the billionaire who's flexing his money and, you know, pretend to be a, the, the rich dude. Um, you know, it's all about preference and everything like that. But to me, I thought Robert Pattinson's portrayal of Bruce Wayne in this movie was amazing. And his acting was freaking absolutely awesome. He did a fantastic job in this movie as Bruce Wayne and as Batman. The voice, once again, we're getting a really cool voice. I wasn't a fan of the voice of Ben Affleck. I just wasn't. I get it. It's like, oh, what's, you know, wouldn't he have a voice changer? I didn't care for it. I didn't like how it sounded. It didn't sound intimidating. It didn't sound like Batman. It just sounded really weird and off-putting. Uh, I didn't... I just wasn't a fan of the whole voice changer for Ben Affleck. Now, as Batman, he was okay. I liked him as Batman. But the whole voice changer aspect, I didn't care for that. Christian Bale is fun. Like, it's a fun portrayal of Batman. I, I love it. But we haven't gotten a very... Like, a performance like this since probably Val Kilmer. Where you're getting that just, on Batman. Where's Commissioner Gordon? Like, you know, just talking normal. Like, I, I that's my preferred voice for Batman. You know, when he's got to sound intimidating, he raises his voice, but he's not like, you know, where's Valcone? You know, he's not like that. It's just, you know, we got to figure out the ruler's. We got to figure out what the ruler's doing right now. Let's just move. You know, he's very just the way he talks is just calm and collected and. It just, it, it, it sounds a lot more, it, it, and also it sounds a lot more intimidating. It doesn't just sound better, it sounds more intimidating, too. And I'll admit, Michael Keaton did a great job with that aspect of the character, where he was able to just use a lower-toned voice, I'm Batman. That's all you needed. You didn't need any more than that. Um, the costume in this movie I loved I loved the ideas they had were with the gadget stuff like that on it I loved the logo I loved the way it looked it was a throwback to the first Batman costume uh I love the slower burn aspect to this movie I thought it was brilliant I love the mystery aspect the throwback to films like seven a little bit of saw in there the jigsaw aspect um <clears throat> I love just the idea of them saying, okay, you wanted Batman as a detective? Here you go. So you have a lot of Batman working with the police, working with GCPD. You have a lot of scenes of Batman not being accepted by the GCPD. They, they, don't, want them, they don't want Batman there. I enjoyed that because you've seen a lot of that in the animated movies. And the animated movies and shows are what really opened the world of Batman up to me. And... So I was able to watch those movies and be like, okay, I love this dynamic of, you know, working with the cops and figuring out crimes and detective, you know, the detective aspect. And even playing the Arkham games, having that aspect there, really just a great way to get into the world of Batman. So when you watch live action movies, you can kind of be like, well, 
I like this, but this is going on. And that's kind of how I was with the previous movies where I was just like, eh, I like this aspect, but this doesn't really work. And then I like this, but this doesn't really work. Like with this movie though, it felt like I liked everything about it where I'm like, okay, it has the action. It has the fight scenes. It has Batman being the shadows. It has Batman being a detective. It has twists and turns. It has a dark atmosphere and the way Gotham in this movie looks is amazing. I love the look of Gotham in this movie. It has an awesome soundtrack, which I thought was one of the best soundtracks to a film I've seen recently. It has amazing cinematography. Some of the shots in this movie are just absolutely amazing and breathtaking. And I mean that. They're just amazing cinematography and amazing shots in this movie. It has an atmosphere. It does its own thing. It doesn't copy from the original Batman or from the Nolan movies. It's doing its own thing. It still feels like a comic book adaptation. It's not too real, but it's not too fantasy. It's just, just in the middle. Just right. <laughs> um, and, and just, I'm gushing about it, you know. And I'm, and I can't stop talking about it because I was really just amazed by the movie. Because I really didn't know much about this movie going into it. I really didn't. I just... You know, seen the trailer, and I'm like, okay, Pattinson playing Batman, all right, I'm interested. It's going to be a darker movie, okay. I think what it is is that there was so much Batman coming out, I was like, okay, you know, I've seen Joker, I've seen Justice League, which was four hours long, the Snyder Cut. I've seen the other Justice League, I've seen Batman vs. Superman, you know. I've seen all the animated movies that were coming out in between those films, so I was just like, I don't know, I was playing the Arkham games, uh, so I think maybe I was just like, okay, another Batman thing. I didn't want to say, I don't want to say I just didn't care about it, it was just that there was a lot of Batman going on at the time, so I was like, alright, we'll see how this goes. But yeah, it really surprised me, it's just a well-made movie all around, it's my favorite Batman movie so far, and I stand by that, it's a great movie, and also a little bit underrated, because... There are some people saying that it's slow, it's boring, which a lot of the arguments of this movie, granted, you can have your opinion. It's just a lot of them, I'm like, well, that same stuff can be said about the Nolan trilogy, which nobody wants to talk about that. People want to say, oh, this is too boring. Those movies are pretty slow. And I love slow movies. I don't find them boring. But if you found this movie boring, how could you not find Dark Knight boring? Because they're kind of similar in the tone not the tone well yeah i guess the tone and also just the the pacing of the film so i didn't really get that criticism you know people talking about pattinson being batman and talking about how he's emo and and the eyeliner stuff the littlest things to complain about which personally i don't understand which i thought the eyeliner thing it makes sense because when you watch every Batman movie, they're all wearing eyeliner. That's why the, they're darkened under their eyes. They're all wearing eyeliner. It's just they never pointed out in the movies before. Which I like they do that in this movie because it makes it realistic. I like that. Um, and different and unique. Uh, what else? People talked about how it was too much of a dark tone. And I'm like, well, Batman Returns had a dark tone. And Dark Knight wasn't a light tone it was definitely more of a serious gritty movie and even batman begins was more gritty so i didn't really understand a lot of the criticism of people they had against this movie whereas people comparing it to the dark knight and saying well the villain isn't as good as heath ledger's joker and all that i i it's whatever i mean i don't really try to pay attention to that stuff but a lot of that was kind of like, well, it's not really meant to be like the Joker. It's not really meant to be like the Dark Knight. It's different. You know, it's a whole different universe. But, yeah, this is my preferred version, man. And I think that what is so cool about this movie is that they set up so much in this film. And some of the problems I have with it could be fixed in pre not in previous movies. Could be fixed in the next movie and in and movies that go on and on, you know, for a franchise, it could be fixed in the future because this is year two Batman. This is a Batman who's still new to the game. And I like the aspect that he's not just this, you know, badass who can feel no pain is untouchable. And only two years into being Batman, 
it's more realistic with it. It's more grounded with it. Um, I, I'm trying to think this out because I don't want to spoil something by accident. But the acting was on point. The performances by Penguin and Catwoman and Valcone and, um, of course, Pattinson and Alfred. I think these characters are all nailed in this movie. And the acting is all well done. Um, yeah, the costume design I really enjoyed. The set design, the CGI didn't stand out to me as being bad. The effects are really good. It's a slow burn movie, but when the action is there, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of good shots. I enjoy the soundtrack, the usage of Nirvana's Something in the Way. Brilliant in this movie. Definitely makes it unique and is to this movie. Um, and the whole movie has a grunge vibe to it, which I know the director and a lot of the cast were talking about how it has this punk rock kind of grunge vibe to it. Which I can definitely see in this movie. It's definitely gritty and, you know, the environment is just, it's always dark. It's always raining. Um, Gotham looks like Gotham. Uh, yeah, just all around a great movie. If I had any nitpicks, I'd probably say maybe I like the Batmobile. I like the Batmobile, but I do want to see more added to it in the future. I won't get into the movies. Spoilers involved in the Batmobile. I liked it, but I wanted to see. I want to see more in the future with the Batmobile. Also, Batman in this movie, he doesn't really utilize a lot of stealth, which I thought was really interesting because it's different, first of all. But when you think of Batman, he doesn't really like rush into fights. He kind of, you know sneaking around in the shadows. This is what I think of when I think of Batman. He's just kind of, you know, in the shadows, watching from afar. Whereas in this movie, he walks up and just starts fighting people. Who doesn't care how many people's there? And I like how he's fighting eight people. He's not going to be, like, punching them all and not getting hit. No, there's a guy over here who comes in and hits him. But, of course, he no-sells it. He's just like, all right, who are you? Punch. And when he punches people, you can hear bones cracking and breaking, like... He's breaking bones in this movie and just busting heads. You know, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. And there's a scene where a guy has like a metal pipe and he fights the guy and grabs the pipe and this other guy is shooting with the gun. But of course, Batman has the armor on. And so he's looking at the guy who just shoot him and the guy who shoot him is just getting like shot because he can't kill him. And he just throws the pipe at the guy's head. That was just crazy. So a lot of the action scenes are very well choreographed. And I'll say this, the action scenes in this are better than like the Tim Burton action scenes, the Nolan action scenes, and maybe the Schumacher action scenes. Like I said, there's a lot of things in this movie that I thought improved upon problems with those movies that they approached this movie and said, all right, let's do this. Let's have Batman the movie, you know? Let's have him in the costume do most of the movie. Let's have fight scenes where it's not edited really bad and, you know, really just shaky and you can't tell what's going on. No, let's shoot it like a normal fight scene. Um, yeah, good lighting in the movie. I mean, all together, I don't want to spend 30 minutes talking about the movie. Um, I'll be doing a spoiler discussion eventually in this movie. But uh, yeah, the Batman, I'm going to give it a solid 9 out of 10. It's a very awesome, fantastic film that I can't praise enough, and if you haven't seen it yet, definitely go out there and watch it, definitely go out there and watch it, it's definitely a theater experience, um, and it'll be on HBO Max here soon, yeah, overall, so glad I seen it, awesome movie, all around, underrated, and I think is an awesome portrayal of Batman and the story. I think the story is really well done. It has a great mystery aspect. The twist is crazy. Um, I loved the Riddler in this movie. They finally made the Riddler an interesting and creepy character. He's a serious villain in this movie. Paul Dane, Paul Dano did a great job playing uh, the Riddler in this movie. Um, and, and the cast is fantastic. Zoe Kravitz, Jeffrey Wright, Colin Farrell, Paul Dano. You got John Turturro in this movie. Um, you got Andy Serkis in this movie. Peter Sar uh, Sarsgaard. 
Yeah, great cast. Very, very great cast, this movie. And Robert Pattinson is awesome as Bruce Wayne and Batman. He did a great job. But, uh, yeah, overall, I don't really have any other problems. Um, if I had to really think about it, my only other complaint is that I wish he would have used more gadgets in this movie. There's a lot of parts where he's not really using gadgets, but those are just small nitpicks. Overall, 9 out of 10 for me. If you've seen the movie, let me know your guys' thoughts on this in the comments below. But if you haven't, definitely go check it out. But anyways, thanks so much for watching my review on The Batman. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, yeah, go see it if you haven't. And if you have, let me know in the comments below. But anyways, thanks so much for watching my review. Hope you guys enjoyed. Blur Force out. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.